Good to see everyone. So welcome everyone. We will now call the uh, February 7th, 2022 meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board to order. Uh, this open meeting of the Redevelopment Board is being conducted re remotely per the governor's extension of the uh, remote meeting provisions of his executive order of March 12th, 2020 due to the state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. For this meeting, the ARB is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. So now I will confirm that all members are present and can hear me. I am the chair, Rachel Zemberry. Uh, next, we have Ken Lau. Present. Uh, next, we have Jean Benson. Present. Melissa Tentopoulos. Present. Steve Revelak. Good evening, Madam Chair. And from the uh, Department of Planning and Community Development, we have Jennifer Reich. Present. And Kelly Linema. Present. Great. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Uh, we'll move uh, right ahead to our first meeting uh, agenda item, which is the zoning warrant article public hearing schedule for the 2022 annual town meeting. And I'll turn it over to uh, Jenny to take us through the schedule that uh, she and Kelly put together. Thank you, Rachel. And Kelly, feel free to unmute at any point to jump in. Um, what we wanted to share tonight is um, just basically the, this is the draft legal notice, which is what we put into the local paper and we publish on our town website. We post it at town hall at the library um this is simply the notice that says we are planning to have public hearings as part of our warrant article hearings and um, they are happening every monday in march and with a conclusion with the deliberations and a vote occurring on monday april 4th um, to set us up for delivering a report to town meeting which then begins on monday april 25th um, so the, the point of this was just to share with you the schedule and confirm that we're okay with the schedule and see if there's any other, any feedback. It is a little bit different because this, this year we have two petitioners who, who or two people who are part of a petition. One of them we've, we've taken on as our articles, but I think, you know, Christian Klein has, uh, is related to a number of the articles and then James Fleming is also a petitioner on many articles and so we had to kind of rearrange things a little bit differently where in prior years we might have had a little less happening in one particular evening um kelly did a great job trying to move around things and accommodate a variety of <clears throat> availability and schedules and it's also um you know there's there's other factors in here that make it that can make it challenging if people are also um, associated with warrant articles that might be getting heard by the select board. So many other variables that had to be uh, considered. So with that, on uh, beginning on March 7th, which is the first night, we would have hearings on, um, I'm just gonna share them on the screen. I'm not gonna read them all. Um, the first article is the citizen petition, and then it would be followed by uh, three of our articles, our first three primary, you know, substantive articles. The next evening um, in uh, on the 14th, the hearing schedule would be to uh, knock out those administrative amendments uh, warrant article uh, and then have James Fleming's articles, which constitutes one, two, three, four, five articles. Okay, the third evening on the 21st, the hearing would be, uh, we have two <clears throat> um, citizen petitions first, um, and then followed by the articles that we discussed with Christian Klein that were filed by the board, uh, some of them, three of them. And then on the last evening, we would conclude all of those articles. There's three more. 
to then be able to wrap up on the fourth with deliberations and votes. So the purpose of this was simply just to, to share it with you and make sure you, you knew what the schedule was going to be about and what to um, expect. We, as you may know from prior years and uh, of town meeting, we publish basically a guide that will be able that you'll be able to click through so that you can um, see the warrant article, see the main proposed motion, um, and that would eventually become our report to town meeting, where there will then be some discussion of uh, what we discussed as a board and what led to the vote um, and what was the vote uh, that was recommended by the board. Um, so that document will be part of the legal notice, which gets posted beginning on February 17th um, is when it becomes available. And so this notice will be up with uh, as much documentation basically as we have at that point in time uh, prior to the hearings. Um, for some of these, we do have some draft motion language and the motion of course is what is the actual amendment to the zoning bylaw. Um, and that'll be the beginning of the discussions, of course. So I'll pause there to see if there are any questions, Rachel. Um, I will just ask before I turn it over to see if anyone else has any questions, um, whether we would like, whether tonight would be a good time to talk about um, whether there are any um, articles with which we'd like to get feedback from the select board should should that be something that they'd um, be interested in, in providing feedback on and, and conversely um, request um, whether there are any articles that will fall in front of them that we'd like to um, provide some feedback on. I believe that last year, the way that we approached this was I collected feedback from our board and then we had a joint meeting with the chair of the select board and redevelopment board and you and Adam, um, so I just wanted to open that up for discussion and see if any of the um, members of this board had any feedback on how they thought that went last year and whether that was something we wanted to pursue again this year. And Jenny would welcome your thoughts on that as well. Great. Um, so we'll start with uh, Ken. Any any thoughts on the schedule or the um, the uh, feedback exchange of feedback between the select board and the redevelopment board? And quite frankly, sorry, I'd like to throw in there too the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, since several of these, I believe, also um, really affect the, uh, the types of um, hearings that, that they participate in. Uh, okay. Uh, the first part, the schedule is fine with me. I think that's uh, very reasonable and a, a great job, Kelly and uh, Je uh, Jennifer, uh, on doing that. Um, and then as far as um, feedback, um, I, I think uh, I think we had asked for a little bit more last year. I'm not quite sure. Uh, we're we're actually asking uh, not only feedback but for support. Which ones do they fully support? Which ones do they have any questions on? Um, I'd rather change it from feedback to, to support, so that we're all on the same page. And uh, and I, I would like it to you know say yes. They have we uh, we had their support and the, if these following, or if you know so that you know. Uh, you know, we're not left holding the bag here all the time um, with this. And then uh, same with the zoning. If they, if they have, um, um, you know, questions are fine, but if they have, uh, but also if they, uh, we were like, uh, um, you know, their comment and their support of, uh, of some of these articles. And then we can just go ahead and make our, our recommendations too. And then we'll have all three when we present it to the town. That was uh, the second part. And then the third part is when we see these, are we going to get more information than what's there or um, we, have a, we have a couple of days to digest it or how's that, how's that working as far as the schedule, uh, Jenny? Yeah, that's, um, that's to come. And uh, typically, you know, we, we start asking and have already started to ask the petitioners, uh, the citizen petitioners in particular, uh, for any material that they have about the actual, the substance of the zoning amendment that they're proposing. Some of them we've seen in some draft format and others, but no, nothing and others, you know, sort of more in passing, we're aware of them, but we don't have actual material provided. Um, so Kelly is in the process of collecting that 
Um, we're trying to gather as much as we possibly can to put into the document that will be posted on the 17th um, to the town's website as part of, of as part of this notice. But what what also might happen is that we'll receive. We have a schedule, and Kelly, I don't have that readily available, but we do have a schedule where we we communicate. Uh, I think a one week at least prior to each one of these public hearing evenings requesting you, that that's the actual deadline we must receive all materials by that time so we so in other words for the meeting on march 7th you'll you would have everything a whole week prior to okay. get them. you know okay. if it's not already in a part of that packet that i mentioned that gets published on the 17th and there will be enough time usually when we um hear these things out uh the final draft uh you know we might not be in total agreement with that whole article and we have we said if you made a few modifications to it we would find it acceptable um how are we going to be able to look at that revised version before we send it send it off to our, with our support or non-support to the town is there a, a, a time where we uh, we have that or am i missing something look at I think that's a good point that Ken is making. Can we look at the last date before the date that we vote? Because I think that that was a fairly light um, group that evening. And so I'm wondering, Ken, if we could ask people to come back again, if there is language that we've asked them to consider adjusting, um, to come back with that for the, I believe it's the 28th. Um, there, there is a lighter number of, um, of Warren articles that we're reviewing that evening. And so perhaps we could incorporate that request. And we can make that clear to people who are meeting in some of the earlier evenings. And that, that's exactly what we've done in prior years. Yeah. We we wait till that last meeting, that last hearing night. And you know, depending upon time and other potential agenda items that have nothing to do with the warrant articles. Um, we make sure that we have the final language, which then, of course, relates to your deliberations and your final vote on the fourth. Um, the, the one thing, the one, the one little, just one other quick thing. Sure. The, the one other, um, you know, thing I don't know. <laughs> we we don't know if there might be a special permit hearing or something also that needs to happen simultaneous with this. That did that has happened, of course, in past years. At the moment, I'm not sure. There might be two uh, potential special permit hearings at some point during this time. I just don't know. But I will let you know. And then the ones that are being presented on the 28th, if we have any word changes there, that's that will leave us enough time to make those um, uh, changes too? Uh, I, no, I, think that for these, I think for these articles, we will have all the language. I'm, I'm less concerned about these ones. Okay, fair enough. We, we tried to organize this in a way that kept the, you know, was in keeping as many of the similar themes together as possible. Nope, I see it now. Yep, I, yep that's good. Thank you. I, I'm all set. Great, thanks, Kim. And just to clarify as well, um, as you had asked about the content of the package, I know Steve has, this is his first time through this with, with our board, um, Jenny and, and Kelly and the, the team at the Department of Planning and Community Development also put together a really wonderful um, summary of, of their, um, their review of each of the warrant articles and, and give us some background information as well. Okay, uh, next we'll go to Jean. Thank you, yeah, the schedule looks fine um, to me. What Kin said, I would just agree with, uh, you know, as soon as we can get the main motions, the better in terms of giving us as much time as possible to look at them and to sort of think about whether we like them or we'd like them with amendments and et cetera. And I know you try, but uh, it's always worth asking every year anyhow, because that often becomes a sticking point along the way. Um, I wasn't clear, Rachel, whether this board is going to meet with the select board or just you and Jenny meeting with the chair of the select board. Which one? So, Jenny, go, go ahead. I think that you have yeah. probably a better handle on schedule. Well, yeah, it's the process actually that we agreed upon last year. We 
thought we would do it again. And I have spoken with Adam Shapley and the town manager about it in, you know, to figure out the best timing of when we will do this, but it would be the two of us plus uh, Rachel as the chair of this board and Steve DeCourcy okay. as the chair of the select board with Doug Heim. Um, and we would have a conversation about what we think are the right articles to weigh in on. And, and we had, and weigh in actually is probably not the right phrase. It was more like, um, you know, any comments or feedback or support, uh, you know, is something different. We didn't talk about that last time, but we would bring that up uh, Perkins uh, request. Um, and then we basically get that information back to either respective boards via a memo, which I think was supposed to be delivered by me. Um, as I recall, last year. This was, last year was the first time we did it. Right. So do you want us now to suggest articles to have in that discussion? Or do you want us to send, you know, Jenny and Rachel an email to you afterward with our suggestions? How would you like us to do that? I think if you have any thoughts now, it would, you know, we can certainly start to collect that. And then, um, I would say, Jenny, I'm not sure if you and um, Adam and Doug have started to look at timing for when we would have that have that meeting, whether you wanted to try and do that um, you know, this month um, so that we could uh, have that in mind before we start the, the hearings, which would be helpful. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the sooner we can start to collect that list, the better, and maybe Jean, you can start that off, and then if others have thoughts, you, you can send them via via email, and we can collect the full list. And do you want these to just be the articles that we're putting in, but also the citizen articles? Both. Both. Okay. I I mean, it seems to me that the articles that um. You want sorry, me to pull the screen back up? By the way, I can. Because I keep losing yeah. it on my screen. Yes, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. You're welcome. So on the first page, I think an article that's going to be very controversial is the two family allowed by right in the R0 and R1. So I think I would be interested in what the select board's thoughts are about that, whether they would support it, whether they would support it in any particular sort of way to do it. The enhanced business districts too. And if you go down a little more, Jenny, um, the solar energy systems, um, not, yeah, keep on going. <laughs> um, the one that I don't understand, which is the, um, enforcement one, I don't know what that's about. So if it turns out appeals, um, so if it's possible to um, figure out what that is and whether it's something the select board needs to be aware of. And the other one is the, is the increasing the FAR. So those would be my suggestions. I'm sorry, Jean. I, uh... Got four of those. Did you want the solar included in that as well? The solar and the the increasing yeah. the FAR. Yep. And one that I don't understand that says appeals, so I don't know whether. Yep. It and then be. enhanced business districts and two family, mm -hmm. one family and R0 and R1. Yep, yep. Okay. Great. And did you have um, any particular thoughts related to the Zoning Board of Appeals and those that you would want um, them to weigh in on? No, it seemed to me they were all just like, let's fix things that have been unclear or need clarification or so. I, it, all of the Christian Klein articles? Yeah, I think, yeah. unless, you know, unless, I know you might want to just touch base with Christian to see if any of yep. them he thinks raises major issues. You do that. But I don't see them being big shot issues. Okay. So far. That's it. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Jean. Uh, we'll go to Melissa next. Um, well, thanks for making the schedule. That's super helpful. And I think with regard to the input from the different boards, 
and selecting which ones we need to hear from. I guess I'm just curious, is that a typical practice, Jenny, or, you know, through Rachel, is that normal? It's something we- Chime in on it, right? Yeah, we've, we've done this in a couple of different ways um, in, the, in the past, and we've just identified how interconnected so many of the articles that are both um, related to amendments to zoning bylaw or town bylaws really, really can be. And so have, have reached out with the um, identification of, of a few articles where we really think it's important to take the temperature of, of both boards and understand um, our perspectives um, related to the experience and the expertise that we each have. Um, and so they similarly last year came to us with a handful of, of articles that they requested that we discuss. Um, and I think that that's something too that we should identify at which meeting we'd like to add that into our agenda. Because again, we need to do that with enough time to get that back to them before, before their voting occurs as well. So that you know, if there's any type of dialogue or back and forth between the boards that there is enough time. Great. Okay. Yeah, no, that seems reasonable. And I think I'm in agreement with kind of the direction we're going with on this. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, Steve. Yes. Um, in terms of the schedule, I think uh, this, I think that it looks like, uh, looks like we'll have a busy March, but it looks completely reasonable to me. Um, in terms of articles that I thought, um, you know, or I, I, I think input from the select board could be helpful are, um, you know, two of them are ones that Mr. Benson, Benson mentioned, uh, the allowing two family by right, because I, you know, there, I think there will be, um, you know, quite a bit of debate about that. Um, and also the appeals article, the first one on the schedule for March 21st. Um, and I'm mainly interested in that because it seems to have um, both a human resources and a cost component. Um, so it's, I, I'd actually be, you know, in addition to the select board's uh, opinion, I think um, our town manager might be a, another person to weigh in. Uh, the remaining one is the, the second article scheduled for March 14th. This was the uh, citizen petition to expand the business districts. Um, you know, and I know the, or I at least have the impression, the, you know, commercial vitality is something the select board has an interest in. Um, so I think, um, you know, they, you know, getting them to weigh in on a, on a change that would expand the footprint of one of our business districts would be worthwhile. Of course, I'd also be interested in hearing any what I'm, what I think is interesting might not be what they think is interesting. So I, I don't want to my remarks to seem as limiting in any way. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And just to clarify, that is one thing that when um, the chairs and and Jenny and Adam and Doug meet together, um, we offer both boards the opportunity to um, identify any any articles that we may not have pre selected um, that they would like to be able to give some feedback on. So. I think at our next meeting, um, you know, once we have seen, or actually it'll have to be after, um, actually the whole the whole warrant is out. So I think that um, we can certainly take a look, maybe perhaps at our next meeting at pre-selecting uh, some of the articles that we'd like to weigh in on so that if those aren't identified by them, we I can go, go to them and let them know that we'd like to offer our opinion or potentially support. Great. Uh, any other thoughts on this schedule or the process before we move on to the next agenda item? Jean. Rachel, just really quickly, can you or Jenna remind me, I think the, the idea was the select board would not actually vote yes or no. Correct. On of these articles, they would just right. give in their opinions and input and whether they would support them or not. The other thing, right. and, and this might be sort of a little, I'm not sure what the right word is, you'll figure it out. Um, last year, they submitted two zoning warrant articles. 
And I think we need to remind them that it would be better if they send people to us because then we have more time to work with the folks than last year when they just appeared at the last moment. It hasn't happened this time, but I think it's worth your mentioning it to the chair of the select board. A good call out. We can certainly make sure to do that. Yeah. Taking notes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Okay, great. Uh, do, you so know, do you need a motion for this to adopt? Oh, uh, you know what? We we. I'm assuming Jenny, do we need a motion to approve the schedule. No. Nope. You want to? I know it never hurts to have a motion and a Let's vote. Let's do it. Which Why not? Be affirmative. Oh, there we go. Goodness. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the public hearing schedule for 2022 annual town meeting as submitted? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, take a roll call vote. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I have a yes as well. So we will move forward with the hearing schedule as submitted. All right, that closes agenda item number one. Can we now move to agenda item number two, uh, which is committee updates. And um, I thought we could just run through um, the list of, of committees that we have um, members of this board uh, uh, as representatives on. And for those that we don't, um, Jenny, perhaps you or Kelly would be able to provide a, a quick um, quick summary. I have a list here and if there are any that I'm missing, we certainly can uh, hit those highlights afterwards. Um, so uh, at this time, Jenny, unless you have an order you'd like to go in, I thought I could just run down the list. Yeah, I was going to say you could run down the list or you could just go around because everybody is associated with their with a uh, committee. Sure, we can start there. And if there's any missing, we'll come back to those at the end. So uh, maybe we'll start, Ken, with you to see if you had any updates for your committees. I'm on, I'm on a CPA uh, uh, committee. Community Preservation Act committee, yeah. Yes, and um, we have listened to all 13 projects that have been submitted as of last Wednesday. And um, we have close to the amount of funds that, that's being requested, but we're a little short. So we're gonna meet next month and decide, are we gonna spread that shortness out to all the projects or postpone one or two projects uh, till the next, next fiscal, uh, fiscal year? So that's where we're at right now. But they're all worthy, good projects uh i'll just mention there are three phases community housing open space and recreation and historic uh, preservation all the projects that have been following those two categories are well worthwhile and um, i think they're very good projects for the town great thanks ken any questions for ken all right uh moving on to gene Zoning bylaw working group. Um, Kelly and Jenny were both there, so they can correct all my omissions and commissions about this. Um, we met on February 2nd, uh, just last week, and we sort of got a presentation on what the articles were going to be for zoning, didn't really discuss them. Most of the discussion was a paper put together by Pam Heidel, who's on the Conservation Commission with input from other people on zoning for resilience. That is, what should the town be doing as there's more flooding um, due to climate disruption and looking at some other communities where they've done zoning, for example, allowing the um, buildings to be built above the flood level, but therefore allowing the height to be higher. So it was that sort of discussion. And um, 
I think maybe within a year, there'll be something um, to propose on that. It, it needs, I think, I mean, there's a lot of good work. There's some more work to be done. One step is try to map out um, where the flood zones are in the town and maybe take a look at where the actual flooding has been because those two, in my experience, don't always mesh up well as another step toward figuring out whether we can just use the two existing um, flood zoning um, districts in town and just add on to them or modify them or need some sort of other overlay districts. So that's in process. I expect it will be in process for at least a few months more. And um, I think that was it, unless Kelly or Jenny want to add. All right. Any questions for Jean? All right. Uh, we'll move on to Melissa. I should have said Steve. He was there too. Sorry, Steve. Oh. <laughs> Um, I was not able to make my committee meetings, unfortunately. So um, I let Rachel know, and I don't know, if, Jenny, if you were able to touch base with Rachel on the implementation, the master plan implementation plan update. I couldn't, for some reason I could not unclick. Um, we, the, that, the master plan implementation committee meeting is on the 17th. Yeah. It's the new, yeah, the next one for February. On, in February, yes. So that, that committee actually hasn't met since last April. Um, so there. You haven't missed anything, Melissa. You have not oh, missed okay. anything. So, um, <laughs> so I looked <laughs> online and we were wondering. Like, well, I'm not sure if they had everything posted. So that's great then. Okay. Yeah, they, they did not end up meeting there um, for an, a number of reasons. Um, and so at this point, they are now finally getting to meet again uh, on the 17th. So will you be able, will you be there or or will you not be able to attend? Um, let's see. It's at, um, sorry, Kelly. Uh, 57 or 7.30, I need to double check. Melissa, I'll follow up with Are you. We, after that. Yeah, we'll be in touch. <laughs> okay. But I mean, I think it's open. So it's it's on it's it's on Zoom, of course. Um okay. so we'll we'll send you all the materials in advance. Okay. But you have missed a meeting. Great. Great. Thanks, Jenny and Melissa. Uh let's see, Steve. Yes, uh, so I have two working groups I can report on. One is the zoning bylaw working group. Um, Mr. Benson covered most of it. Um, I just wanted to mention the, you know, the challenge, the sort of challenge in figuring out what area we're working with. So, for example, one uh, option is taking modeling of flood and precipitation data, sort of laying it on a map and saying that these, this should be our floodplain overlay district. Um, another option that some communities have done is instead of basing it on the 1% risk area, the quote unquote 100 year storm area, uh, they'd actually use the 0.2% risk area, which is, you know, that sort of like the five, the 500 year area surrounding it. Um, you know, there's Ms. Heidel's memo was, it was a good, it was, I, I thought it was a really great summary of you know, what other communities have do have done and, you know, by extension, what we could consider doing. So um, I, I'm looking forward to working more on this. My second committee is the Housing Plan Implementation Committee. Uh, we voted to adopt the Housing Production Plan by a vote of three to one. Uh, and I don't believe that's, I, I think that was primarily what we covered at our last, at our last meeting. Great. Thank you, Steve. Um, so I'll cover the um, the three committees that I've been a part of, one of which um, has not been quite as active as a committee um, lately, which is the Economic Recovery Task Force, although it's not that the committee hasn't the committee hasn't been as active, but um, Allie and, and Jenny and the rest 
rest of the, the staff members of the town certainly have. Um, and one of the things that I think is most relevant to this board from that is something that actually came up at one of our previous meetings, which is how to streamline some of the applications, processes, and procedures um, for new businesses and current businesses who are looking to um, change parts of their, their operations or their, their, physical, um, their physical structures. Um, you know, to, to make sure that there's a clearer pathway to uh, establishing an, a new business in town or altering your current business plan. Um, so Jenny, I don't know if you have anything else to, to add to that, but to me, that's been one of the things that I think would be most impactful to this board. Yes, definitely. I mean, this board, I know, cares about that issue um, and, and should care about it, especially in relationship to how we work with other boards. It came up during, maybe some of you remember, uh, before we were doing recodification, we talked a lot with um, other boards. We actually had an all board meeting where this particular issue came up pretty high on the list of things we wanted to get done. But it uh, it does take a lot of money to do what we want to do as well as staffing project management. And so we have not had either of those until at least now we have half of those this year. Um, we have the capital money to get it done. Um, and we have some grant support, but we unfortunately don't have the staff. So we're in the process of hiring through the IT department, project management staff that will get the ball rolling and start the whole process, which will take time to develop. And this board will definitely have a role in providing input to the consultant that is inevitably hired to do the work, to bring us into a more you know, dynamic online platform for permitting. Great, thank you, Jenny. Appreciate the additional background and next steps there. Um, let's see, for the Arlington Heights Neighborhood Action Plan Implementation Committee, I think the longest committee name in Arlington right now, um, we had a, a really wonderful um, walk through the, the district in the, in the fall and identified two areas that the committee is really focused on right now, which is uh, signage and bringing um, bringing the, um, the standards of the, um, the current signage bylaws, um, contacting a lot of the businesses and helping them understand what is actually required and how they um, need to adapt in order to, to meet the current requirements. Um, and then a second focus is on um, bike parking and um, the, uh, the, um, the way that the bike parking and the, the pathways to the bike path um, are, are identified. Um, I also know that the department has been working on um, items like the, um, the, the, the challenges with the, um, the, the sidewalk, the sidewalks there and um, ensuring that they are um, in, in better repair then they have been specifically the, the brick sidewalks um, for accessibility reasons, which I, I really appreciate. Um, those have been the, the two main focuses of, of that committee. Um, and then for the, the last committee that I'll report on, which has been the most active, um, is the remote participation study group, which was um, created as part of town meeting um, last year, which is exploring um, how the town will be approaching hybrid meetings um, for all boards and public boards and committees going, going forward. Um, and there is a, actually tonight, the, the draft report to town meeting is being presented to, to the select board, which identifies um, basically a pilot program for some of the um, most active um, boards in town such as ours, um, who, who meet with um, a large cross-section of the public and um, deal with a, 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 a number of different challenges with regards to um, trying to um, trying to be able to host a, a hybrid meeting. So um, the, the um, recommendation will be that there be a pilot program period of time for, I believe it's seven different boards or committees in town, including the select board, the ZBA, the redevelopment board, and several of the school board, uh, the disability commission, and, and several others. Um, and we are right now working with a, a small group to identify what the parameters 
of the that hybrid period would be? What does the feedback loop look like? You know, how, how are we going to test? Um, you know, the models for what will work, what what won't. What are the what is the equipment that's needed? What rooms are going to be prepared? Um, and so that's part of a, a larger effort. Um, that again, there will be recommendations that to town meeting that this be piloted, and then the pilot would then start following any discussion at town meeting. Um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions on any of those three committees that you might have, and any concerns you might have or questions about that pilot program. Ken. Uh, there was one more board I thought uh, you were gonna cover it, which was the marijuana uh, group board. Um, that, uh, no, I was not. I thought you were covering. Yeah, I thought you were going to mention, but uh, <laughs> I'm so is. sorry. Yes, if you could cover that one, that would be great. Uh, we met, and uh, that probably be the last time we met. Um, we've uh, approved the last site, pretty much, right, Jenny? And so that board's um, just being disbanded now. Until I guess um, more sites come available. Right, the, the marijuana study group just activates when there's some application to review or input that is required for the select board, um, usually as part of their host community agreement decision-making process. So we, we, the group met and provided comments to the board and the, the HCA was granted to Calix Peak, which is planning to open at 251 Summer Street um, but they still have to go through a regulatory and licensing process. They are having a community meeting, I understand. I don't have the specifics. And eventually, at some point, um, probably my best guess again. <laughs> wow, so many qualifiers. Um, <laughs> they, will <laughs> likely, they will likely come to, to this board in like June or July. So it'll be a while. Um, so nothing, nothing yet from from that applicant and there are no other licenses except for the transportation delivery, but we have yet to fully roll that out. Great, thank you, Jenny. And thank you, Ken, for participating in that, um, in that board, I appreciate it. No problem. Uh, any other questions? Uh, Madam Chair, just a comment through you. Please. Um, I'm actually really, I I'm really thrilled to hear that um, there is a effort to streamline the permitting process or, um, you know, this is, I remember the all hands meeting at the beginning of zoning recodification because the, uh, the permitting process we had in place at the time with the big flow chart, chart in the zoning bylaw that was more or less impossible to read, um, you know, was one of the reasons I got involved. <laughs> so I'm, it's happy to see that moving forward. Great, thank you, Steve. I, I agree as well. I know that that's a big project and I appreciate um, I appreciate that's being taken on. Um, Jenny, the, the two that I know we have appointees who um, rep represent, um, who were, who were uh, reviewed and approved by the redevelopment board are for the open space committee in Envision Arlington. Um, so I don't know if that's something that we could coordinate, just a, a quick update from them at one of our future meetings. It would be great, again, to um, have the, the folks who, um, who represent the, the the board come in and we'd love to interact with them and, and uh, hear what, what they're working on as well. Yes, absolutely. I Yeah, I had not thought of that for this evening, but we could invite, um, I think actually the open space committee one would be very appropriate because eventually um, you will be reviewing the open space recreation plan draft and we'll need to provide your support, comments and support on that. Um, Kelly, do you have like a rough sense of that timing? Yes, the, the next public meeting, which will be the final public meeting on that planning process will be somewhere late in March. And then it looks like the plan will be complete. Um, they're aiming for May, the plan completion date. Great, so sometime in March or April, we'll probably have to say April. Perfect point. timing. Yes. <laughs> um, and then similarly, oh, we can have the Envision Arlington conversation. Um, we'll figure out the best time for Jagged to come. Okay, great. Thank you. Jean. Just a quick question. Who's the staff contact on the open space and recreation plan? 
It's David Morgan. He's our environmental planner and conservation agent. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Great. Uh, any other questions or comments on committee updates? All right, we'll close agenda item number two and move to agenda item number three, which are the meeting minutes from January 3rd, 2022. And I know that um, Jean and Steve, thank you very much for providing your comments ahead of time um, to Jenny. Uh, Jenny, I don't know if you wanted to pull those up. Yeah, I made a lot of edits uh, that were provided. So I'll just, um, if you want, I can just roll roll through here. Yeah, there was, there was one that I have, and I apologize, I wasn't able to send it to you earlier today. I believe that um, the 645 Mass Ave um, application, um, which was the, the, the bank application, if I'm remembering correctly, the address, that would, would have been a four to zero continuation instead of five to zero since Steve had to abstain. Yes, that is that is right. Great, that's the only correction I had in addition to what Steve and Jean already sent through. Um, but I'll go through and see if anyone has any comments. Um, I know Jean, you already provided some, but wanted to roll back through and see if there's anything else. You're good, okay, Steve? Mm -hmm. Nothing further. Can I have you? one. Great. On page nine, of, uh, somewhere in the middle. Um, I can you tell me like roughly what page you're on because it or like what paragraph you're talking about because I don't have page nine. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, sorry. It's page one of four. Nine is the uh, is the whole thing. Sorry, I apologize. Okay. And it's in the middle. Um, it says. Uh, I lost it now. There was, I think, um, either Jean or Steve caught an edit uh, here in a sentence that you, something that you were saying. Yeah, this is uh, Mr. Lau was, uh, said he was concerned that the ground floor with blinds and graphics will look like dead space. Uh, I'm not sure where, uh, where the walk off space comes from. I just scratched all that, all that off and say from the street. That's what, that's what I meant. You know, that's it. That's all I had. Great. Thank you. Uh, Melissa, any edits? No. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Uh, is there a motion to, oh, we can scroll through the other edits. Anything yeah. I just integrated all the edits that I received. Thank you so much for sending them. Great. Thank you. Um, is there a motion to, uh, I'm sorry? I said thanks to Jean. Oh, <laughs> great. Um, is there a motion to approve the January 3rd, 2022 meeting minutes as amended? I so move. Second. Great, I'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. I'm a yes as well. So the meeting minutes from January 3rd, 2022 have been approved as amended. That closes agenda item number three. So we'll move to agenda item number four, which is uh, open forum for this evening. So at this time, I see that we have a few people who have joined us. If you would like to speak and address the board, please uh, use the raise hand function and we'll call on you. All right, uh, looks like we have one speaker tonight. So I'll remind you that you have up to three minutes. Please uh, introduce yourself by your first, last name and address. And uh, please go ahead, Don Seltzer. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. As we begin discussing these warrant articles, it helps to be working with a common understanding of the basic facts regarding the diversity in our housing. First fact is that Arlington has 20,461 housing units. Just 39% are single family and 61% are two family or more. It makes no difference whether you reference our local assessors database or the American community survey data. 
as long as you count up the numbers correctly, you'll get the same results. After the last meeting, when these numbers were disputed, uh, I was sent an explanation of just how Barrett Consulting had arrived at their published numbers. And I also had some correspondence with Steve Revelak. It is clear exactly how Barrett Consulting erred in processing the data from the American Community Survey. They miscounted more than 1,000 townhouses and duplexes, classifying them as single family homes. The next fact is that single family homes in R0 and R1 comprise just 1,240 acres, which is only 38% of Arlington's land area. A significant portion of R0 and R1 is used for other purposes, including our schools, playgrounds, municipal buildings, churches, and cemeteries. Additionally, there are more than 600 multifamily homes in these districts. The final fact is that Arlington has another 645 single family homes located in the R2 districts. They can already be rebuilt as two families by right. This is important because it gives us insight into exactly what would be built if we rezone our single family districts. This board has been provided with the recent sales data for those homes that have come in the market, been torn down, and replaced with condo duplexes. You can judge for yourselves what income group is being served by this development and whether any affordable housing is being built as a result. And I'd be glad to go into this in detail with any board members who are interested, you know, after this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to speak this evening? Okay, uh, seeing none, we will close open forum for this evening. Uh, so any other items before we move to adjourn? All right, uh, I will now see if there's a motion to adjourn. So move to adjourn. Second. All right, let's take a roll call vote. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm yes as well. Thank you all so much, and we will see you in a few weeks. Have a great evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Bye, guys. Thank you, Bye -bye. everyone.